So now you should know what an antiderivative is. We're going to be looking at the indefinite integral. And we showed what that is in the previous video on antiderivatives. So let us take a look. We are now trying to find these integrals, which means we're looking for antiderivatives. So the question is, intuitively, we'll get some rules shortly, but just intuitively, what must I differentiate to get 3x to the power of 5? Well, we know when I differentiate, I make the exponent of x less by 1. So we should have an x to the power of 6. All right. But the question is, what is the constant that goes in front? So if I just differentiated x to the power of 6, I would have 6x to the power of 5. But I just want 3x to the power of 5, not 6. So if I have a half here, a half, x to the power of 6, if I find the derivative of that, it's 3x to the power of 5. So there is an antiderivative. So this integral is half x to the power of 6 plus c. Now we're not going to do them all intuitively. We're going to figure some of them out with the rules we're getting there. But I just want you to get a feeling using differentiation. All right, if I look at the next one, 3x. Let's look at 3x. And we're going to see that the Integral of the derivative of the function, sum of the functions is the same as the sum of the integrals. And we can know that from differentiation as well. What do I differentiate to get 3x? Well, I know the x exponent has to go up by 1, so that x squared. But if I differentiate x squared, I get 2x squared. But I want a 3x squared. So what do we have? Is 3 over 2. So I use that 3 and this 2 I put in the denominator. We'll see that again. But we're getting rules shortly, so hang on. Differentiate, 3 over 2 times 2 gives me 3. Exponent less by 1, that one works. Plus, now that 4 I'm going to take along. I want to x to the power of 3, but I want to get rid of the 3 when I multiply, when I differentiate. Test it. 4 over 3 times 3 gives me just 4x squared plus c. All right, so what we're seeing is if I've got the integral, we're going to leave the constant but if, let's say we've got a constant times x to the power n, and I want that antiderivative. It'll be x to the power, I add the exponent, 1 to the exponent, but then I divide by that number so that when I differentiate, it's eliminated, plus c. Now, I'm making a little star here because this isn't a full rule. We're going to look at something else shortly. Let me do that now. What about the integral of x, 1 over x? That's the same as the integral of x to the power minus 1. I can't use this rule now because if I add 1 to minus 1, I've got a 0, and then it's all going to collapse. But hopefully you recognize that as lin. The derivative of lin of x gives me 1 over x. But because lin is only defined for positive values of x, we introduce the absolute value there. So the antiderivative of x to the power minus 1 is lin of the absolute value of x. So this rule only works when x is not, n is not equal to minus 1. All right, so let's look at the others. What must I differentiate to get cos? We know that sine. What must I differentiate to get sine? Well, we're thinking of cos, but there's a little thing to worry about. What about the sine? What's the derivative of cos? The derivative of cos is negative sine, but I just want sine, so I need a negative cos there. All right e to the power x, we love that function. The antiderivative of e to the power x is just e to the power x. And then 5. What must I differentiate to get 5? It's 5 times x, because that's like a 5x to the power naught, so we can use this rule we have here. All right, so let's introduce some rules. That'll help. Some of them are intuitive, and you'll know already some of them we've seen. The integral of a constant is constant times x. x to the power n, we've seen this rule now but it only for n not equal to minus 1. When n is minus 1, it's lin. e to the power x we've got, and then we've got the other exponential function. If I've got a to the power x, the antiderivative would be a to the power x over lin a. Let's test that quickly. What's the derivative of a to the power x over lin a plus c? Well, that derivative, what's the derivative of a to the power x? Because 1 over lin a is just a constant. Remember, the derivative of a to the power x is a to the power x lin a, plus the derivative of c is naught. So then I'm left with lin a is cancelling out, and I've got a to the power x. So that one works. All right, and then there's a whole lot more. The derivative of a, the integral of a constant times a function is a constant times the integral of the function. The sum 
or difference of two functions is integral is the sum of difference of the separate integrals. Now take note, this works for plus and minus, same as differentiation, not for multiply and divide. For differentiation, we have to have the product rule and quotient rule, and we're going to have to have special ways to deal with integrals where I've got products and quotients. So it only works for plus or minus that I can take it apart. And then the trig functions, we know the derivative of sine is cos, so the integral of cos is sine, and so on. You can pause, make sure you're happy with all of these, and then we've got the inverse trig functions. These three cover all the options because the r cos, r cot, and r cosec was just negative, these ones, so we don't need that. So this covers all the ones you should know. Now, it'll take some time, but if you're good with your differentiation, you'll know this. But in the meantime, you might want to make a list, keep it one side to make sure you've got them all. So let's apply some of these. Let's run with these rules. All right, here I've got a nice polynomial. Well, the antiderivative, I can do one part at a time. 2x cubed is 2 over 4x to the power 4 because we add 1 to the exponent. Then I've got 4 over 3x to the power 3. Add 1 to the exponent and divide by that number. Minus 5 over 2x squared plus 8x plus c. Always remember that part. Now you can tidy this one up. 2 over 4 is just a half, so that would be nice. I'm not going to rewrite it, but know that you can simplify it a little bit. I'm just worried about the first step of integration, finding those antiderivatives. All right, x, the root of x, I'm going to rewrite that as x to the power of half, because my rule I have is if a function is in this form. Now, what happens if you add 1 to a half? It's 3 over 2, so it's 1 over 3 over 2. I'm going to make this prettier soon. x to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. Now, if I differentiate that, I will get 1x to the power of half. So I'm happy with that. But 1 over 3 over 2 is way too messy. That's the same as 2 over 3x to the power 3 over 2. So I, if I've got a fraction there, I'm not going to say divided by a fraction. I'll rather multiply by the reciprocal. All right, the next one, we've got to write that out too, because what I want you to notice is this. We've got a constant there. The constant is 1 over 5, and I've got t to the power minus 3. All right. Now I can find the antiderivative. The 1 over 5 just tags along. t to the power minus 3. If you add 1 to minus 3, you get minus 2. So it's 1 over minus 2, t to the power minus 2, plus c. So that's minus 1 over 10, t to the power minus 2, plus c. And if you're worried about your answer, you're not quite sure, did you do it right? Best thing ever, you can differentiate. Minus 1 over 10 times minus 2 gives me 1 over 5 make the exponent less by 1, and I get what I should get. So you can always test your integration with differentiation, but your differentiation has to be strong. And last one, another root, let's just rewrite that. That's x to the power 6 over 5. So x to the power 6 over 5, add 1 to 6 over 5, so you add 5 over 5, so you'll get 11 over 5. So it's 5 over 11, x to the power 11 over 5 plus c. And you can test by differentiating. All right, let's do some more. All right, the first one, let's just rewrite that. I've got 2t to the power minus a half. Now it's in a nice format. And then the rest I just keep writing. Don't start integrating parts of it and do it in bits and pieces. When you integrate, you integrate it all together. Else you're going to have notational problems. All right, so we've got 2 minus a half plus a half gives, oh, minus a half plus one gives me a half, and one over a half is two, t to the power a half, plus five over four, t to the power four, because I add one to that exponent and put it in the denominator and as the exponent. Now, the sign, I know it's cos, but always check is it positive or negative. You have a minus three sine of t, so if I differentiate cos of t, I get minus sine, so that's good, so it's plus three cos t. Just check that one again. The derivative of cos is minus sine, so it'll be minus 3 sine t. So we're good, plus c. And yet again, you can simplify that first part by multiplying 2 with 2 and have a 4. All right, the next one, you've got to stop. Before you start integrating, don't rush into it. We've got to do some work. It's not difficult work, but we've got to do some work. Now, at this stage, we do not have any rule for if I've got the product of two functions. 
those how to deal with those things will come later but this is not too difficult we can simply just multiply those brackets out so that's 1 over 6 I can take the 1 over 6 out it looks better already and then I've got 2x squared plus 10 minus 1 plus 9x minus 5 and now it looks way better this one we can quickly find the antiderivatives 2 over 3x cubed plus 9 over 2x squared minus 5x. Everything plus c. There we go. Next one, same thing. We do not have a rule for the quotient to find the antiderivative of the quotient. But because I'm just dividing by one thing, I can divide first into both terms in the numerator. So I've got 2x minus 4x cubed. So yet again, it quickly simplified to something we've got the tools to deal with. So that gives me 2 over 2, which is 1x squared, minus 4 over 4, which is 1x to the power of 4 plus c. All right, we're going to do more examples and look at more ways to deal with indefinite integrals in the next video.